Hey guys, it's Katie with SMB, and today we're going to install the new particle separator for the Polaris Razor XP Turbo, XP Turbo S, and XP 1000. So before you begin the installation, you're going to want to make sure that you have power to the bus bar. So you're going to do that by taking off this front part here. So you'll notice that you have a positive and negative harness that are connected to your bus bar, giving it power. So if your vehicle does not have this harness, uh, Polaris does sell a kit because you will need power to the bus bar to continue this installation. Now you need to decide where you want to mount your particle separator. We recommend three different positions. So you can mount it on the lower roll cage, underneath the top roll bar, or above. Now you're going to install the clamp adapters using the provided hardware and Loctite onto the particle separator. Now you're going to install the clamp straps onto the roll cage. We like to put a piece of plastic down here so you don't scratch it up. Now you'll install the pivot bodies onto the clamps using the provided hardware. Now install the L brackets to the pivot bodies with the provided hardware. Now this step is going to be easier if you have help, but what you're going to want to do is hold the particle separator in the position that you want to mount it, and you'll line up the L brackets. And then you'll also want to make sure that this opening right here isn't blocked by anything because that's where the flexible ducting is going to go. Once you have the particle separator in the position that you want, you can then go ahead and loosely install the particle separator to the L brackets. Now go back and tighten down all the hardware. Start by removing these two bolts. Now you can just uninstall the old side cover. Install the flex duct adapter with the smaller hose clamp. Install the SMB side cover with the provided hardware. Now you need to measure how much flex ducting you're going to use. So the best way to do that is to attach it to the flex duct adapter and then bend it over the particle separator. Um, you'll notate where you need to cut it. Just give yourself an extra inch. Install the flex end cuffs on both ends of the flexible ducting and then tighten it down using the hose clamp. Install the flex duct on the flex duct adapter and the particle separator. Now just go back and tighten down the hose clamps. Now you're going to remove the seat to gain access to the battery. Next you'll just disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. Now you're going to attach your main wiring harness to the bus bar and you have the battery, the ground, and the accessory ring terminals. After you have the three ring terminals hooked up, you're then gonna take the fan connector and you're gonna feed it through this hole here, and it's gonna go to the driver's side. So you don't have to take this top area off, it was just easier to show you. Now you're gonna remove these push rivets and these screws from both the front and the back door wells. This will allow us to route the wire cleanly all the way to the particle separator. So it was a little hard to see on camera, so we did this off camera, but to walk you through it, what we did was we zip tied the relay to the main wire harness, and then we took the harness down here, went over the steering column, and then tucked it underneath in between here, um, zip tied it along the way, all the way to the back where we fed it through, um, and then you can see the slack hanging right here. Now you're gonna take off this cover. Next, you're gonna secure the ignition sensor with the flat side back and the clip facing the engine. And you'll take one zip tie and you'll stick it through the left side and you'll wrap it around this screw and the sensor. And then you'll take another one and you'll put it on the right side. And then to make sure everything's in place, you'll take a zip tie and go through both of those. You'll want to make sure that the ignition sensor is installed correctly, so you can do that by tugging on it, and you can see that it doesn't slide. If you notice yours does slide, uh, your zip ties might be installed incorrectly. So there is a left and a right side separated by a support. You're going to want to make sure that you have one on both sides. 
Once you have the three ring terminals installed, you're gonna take the main harness to the back of the vehicle and you're gonna plug the ignition harness and the main harness into the control harness and then you're gonna plug it into the fan just to make sure that everything is working properly. Before you do the final routing and get everything in its place, you're gonna to wanna to reconnect the negative terminal on the battery, turn the ignition on just to test the fan and make sure it works. To make sure that everything is working properly, you're gonna to wanna to put the vehicle on the key on position and then go back to the particle separator uh, where you should feel a light airflow coming from both of the fans. And then you'll wanna put the vehicle in idle and you should feel a moderate airflow coming from both of the fans. And then you're going to want to rev the vehicle up to about 4,000 RPM for about five seconds. And then when you let your foot off the gas, you should hear the fans at max speed for about two seconds. And then you'll notice that they decrease. Now you're going to pull the harness to the passenger side wheel well. And then above the shock, there's going to be a little hole and you're just going to feed it through there all the way to the particle separator. After you've connected everything, you're just going to take all of the slack and you're going to use the two push-in zip ties and connect it above the air box to this bar. So after you're done zip tying everything out of the way, you can go ahead and reassemble the car and you're done. So if you have any questions or you just want to know more, you can always give us a call or check it out on our website and I'll see you next time.